Quamzy is back to its old tricks, putting screens into keyboards and keyboards into screens. But did they finally get the combination right this time around? Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. What we have in front of me is the Quumzy KX, a brand new portable touchscreen monitor boasting a 1920 by 1080 resolution at 60 hertz, 10 point touchscreen, and four USB-C ports in a hub, two of which are USB-C 3.1 and one with full power delivery 3.0, supporting 60 watt power pass through. There's also built in speakers and a fully flexible 360 degree rotating stand. So what's so special about a portable monitor that I wanted to review it? Well, your portable monitors don't do this. But wait, there's actually more. It also features a fully fledged 98 key touch keyboard that's independent of the operating system or software. So if you're running an OS like Mac OS that doesn't have native touch support, you can still use an on-screen keyboard. Kind of a cool trick. As far as its presentation, as a portable monitor, it's one of the most well-constructed that I've come across. It does have a pretty large black bezel on the front, but in my opinion, that almost leads it to a passing resemblance to an Apple product very similar to an iMac. The monitor housing and the stand are both made out of aluminum, making this feel very sturdy and rigid. You could manhandle the heck out of this thing without worrying about it flexing or morphing. On their Kickstarter page, Quumzy says the aluminum was chosen to help dissipate heat which I partially agree with, but I think there's another piece to this. Given how many times you're going to maneuver the screen, change its orientation and all of that, I have a feeling that rigidity was their first concern. And just look at how maneuverable this thing is. The stand is definitely the most interesting thing about this design straight out of the box. The stand collapses fully fit and flush for making it easily portable in a laptop bag, but it also extends to a height that rivals most desktop monitors. The base on the stand rotates a full 360 degrees, and the monitor itself easily detaches from the stand so you can mount it in either landscape or portrait orientations. Having a monitor this versatile, both in layout and orientation, is really nice and makes it one of the better portable solutions that I've seen, especially when you compare it to all of the other portable monitors that all seemingly come with those folio-style cases. Like most portable monitors, the Quumzy KX is designed to be plugged into a laptop right out of the box, as it only needs a single USB-C cable to deliver all of its data, power, and video needs, and that includes functioning as an HID device for the on-screen keyboard and 10-point touchscreen. For use with a desktop, though, it's not quite so simple. The Quumzy KX does have a USB-C to HDMI converter, as well as dummy power inputs that you can plug into just about any device you wanted. But the chance of your desktop PC having a USB-C full-fledged port is kind of a rare thing. So if your laptop and desktop both don't have the proper USB-C cable, there is this handy little bastard adapter in the box. On Quumzy's website, they focus on using this monitor as a keyboard first, so I think that's where we're going to start our review process. A single button press converts this thing from a 1920 by 1080 display into a fully functional touchscreen keyboard. And it does just kind of work, and is kind of reminiscent of another one of Quumzy's products. It's definitely a little difficult to type at full speed, as you can't rest your fingers on the home row like you would a normal keyboard, and there's no real tactile feedback to it at all. Just a little noise from the speaker to verify that you actually did press a key. You do get an option of six different sounds, but to be honest, they all kind of suck. As a touchscreen, it works pretty much exactly as I would expect. The touch was accurate, and I had virtually no real issues when navigating, even with small UI elements inside of Windows. The only real hiccup was trying to click or drag things near the edge of the monitor, but that really is more of a Windows limitation, as you can swipe left or right to bring up widgets or notifications. So I'm not necessarily sure it's an issue with the touchscreen itself. Getting back to the physical characteristics of this display and why I actually wanted to review it is definitely the stand. It makes it one of the most versatile portable displays that I've ever used. Again, the base can rotate freely 360 degrees, which is pretty cool, but not overly useful when it's plugged into something. But moving between landscape and vertical mode is fairly simple, and you still get the benefit of having that very sturdy stand. 
unlike, again, the cheap folio stands that have become so ubiquitous with portable displays lately. But the monitor also has one last little trick up its sleeve, and that are the kickstands that are built into the monitor display itself, completely separate from the stand. If you want to drop this flat and use it as a keyboard or prop it up ever so slightly, that is totally an option and it will be fully rigid against your desk. And again, using the stand, you can go from completely flat all the way to fully vertical and even beyond. I think the fact that this monitor is so versatile and maneuverable really amplifies the touchscreen element of it. For years, I've been wanting to use Windows with a dedicated touchscreen monitor, and I have since about 2008 through various different models. But the reality of it is no one wants to use a monitor like they're in Minority Report. Your hands aren't designed to do this. You need to rest your arms so you can comfortably use your computer. A screen like this, and specifically a stand like this, takes all of that uncomfortableness out of the display itself. It allows you to set the display at any angle, at any height, to be able to comfortably use it and even bring it to you. It's just great. Throughout the last week or so in testing this, I found myself almost growing complacent and completely used to the conveniences that a touchscreen in this form factor bring. For example, I'm not one who does a lot of digitally signed documents. I would much prefer to print out a document, sign it with a pen, and then rescan it. And that's typically what I will do for a lot of agreements. However, I had this touchscreen set up on my desk the other day, needed to sign a document. So I just drug the PDF down to this window, signed it in Adobe Acrobat, and saved the file. Those small conveniences aside though, trying to integrate touchscreen capabilities of this monitor into my actual day-to-day -day workflow wasn't quite as simple as the software is definitely not there inside of Windows yet. As I noted in my review of the Quumzy K2, one of my first thoughts was, wouldn't it be awesome to put OBS or digital audio workflows onto the touchscreen here and have full access to all of my sliders in a touchscreen interface? And where the K2 failed, the KX does find some success. I had a DAW up on my main display and the mixer down here on the touchscreen, but it got old pretty quick. See, the way Windows handles touch input is the same way that it handles your mouse input, and that's pretty much the same on any other operating system too. There were times that I'd be using my mouse up on the main display, and then I'd take my finger and drag a slider down on the touchscreen. However, that relocates your mouse down to the touchscreen and hides it so it can display the touch interfaces. Now, dragging my mouse between monitors is something I would have to do if I were only using a mouse anyway. But when I use the touchscreen, it kind of amplifies that inconvenience as it vanishes your cursor and forces you to relocate it every single time. It sounds like such a small and insignificant gripe, but when you have to do it a hundred times, it adds up and truly did frustrate me. Overall, I appreciate the option of having a touchscreen, but I definitely can't say, even in this form factor, that it revolutionized my workflow. And what's worse, I didn't find myself in a single situation where I thought I needed the on-screen keyboard. I can't even think of a situation where I'd want the touchscreen keyboard when I have a laptop with an actual keyboard right there. I also ran the Quumzy KX through all the same color accuracy testing I do on all my other monitors, and the results were... Well, not great, and that's kind of where this review starts to fall apart. Yes, the monitor does display an image, and I'm sure for portable use cases it is just fine, but there's really no way I can integrate this into any creative workflow for anything important, at least as far as video production, graphic design, or photo editing goes. I've said it before, but any monitor produced in the year of our Lord 2023 needs to have 100% sRGB color accuracy. That's pretty much the base standard that I go by these days. But this monitor only covers 90%, and that frankly doesn't cut it and doesn't even make sense to me. That's not even going into the atrocious 65% Adobe RGB or 70% DCI-P3 color ranges. So I guess what I've been dancing around here is, is this worth it? What I can definitely say for Quamzy is they are doing stuff that no one else is really doing. When I saw the Quamzy K2, I was excited, not because I thought it was going to change my life just based on the premise, but because no one else was doing a keyboard monitor touchscreen hybrid. And now that I've tried it, I can kind of say the same thing about the KX. No one else is building a hardware-based touchscreen keyboard that also functions as an external display. It's really cool, and it's definitely a net positive feature to have, but can it justify the cost? Quamzy is asking $389 retail for this product, and it certainly has the look and feel to justify that price point. The stand itself is one of the most premium portable display stands that I've ever used. 
But at the end of the day, they used a bog standard 15 inch panel. The color accuracy is absolutely atrocious at this price point. And while the touchscreen is absolutely serviceable, does it somehow stand out amongst the other touchscreens on the market? Outside of the form factor, no. I did spend some time browsing online to compare price points with other portable monitors, specifically in the looks and feel department. The Quimsy KX definitely stands apart from the hordes of folio stands and cheap plastic housings. But a premium look and feel, and even a premium stand, to me don't justify the price point. At nearly $400, I tend to be a little bit more critical for products like this. And honestly, that price doesn't justify the premium look and feel. I want to see better internals to go along with it. For example, Inacon, which is a monitor company that I've reviewed in the past, currently has a 13.3 inch OLED screen with 100% sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3 color gamut for only 150 bucks. Putting a bog standard 15 inch display into your very expensive housing doesn't make it a better product. If Quamzy took this exact same formula, but with a halfway decent display inside, say they replaced it with an OLED or with a 2.5K or had a smidge of color accuracy or even replaced it with a gaming panel and gave me 144 Hertz, I think they would have an absolute home run on their hands. But as it is, they just put a bog standard 15 inch panel in there and called it a day. And well, that's just not good enough. So as much as I wanted to like this panel, their execution remains a little bit clumsy. As always, if you're interested in the Quumzy K2, I will have affiliate links down in the video description. Go give those a look if there's something that I missed here and you wanna buy one of these displays for yourself. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them below and make sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. It's not the only thing that's clumsy.